Have you ever tried to convert a non-keto recipe, maybe something that's been handed down through generations in your family, into a keto recipe, but one of the ingredients it called for was corn syrup, and corn syrup's not keto? Well, today we're gonna solve the problem by helping you to make a keto-friendly corn syrup. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of your different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we come up with a solution in the keto recipe space, you'll be learned to it. So I love to experiment in the kitchen. One of the things I always liked doing pre-keto was making different types of desserts. And I don't make too many of them now because I have no self-control. But I always enjoyed making things like taffy, and candy, especially gummy bears. And I've never really played around with it too much on keto because you could never get it just right. Like gummy bears, yes, you could make keto gummies, but they're not the same. They're not like really sticky, chewy, like the ones you would buy in a store. They're like a denser jello yeah. consistency to me. Because really, if you find the ones that are in the store and you try to duplicate those, they call for a key ingredient, corn, corn syrup. syrup. So today we're gonna show you how to make a keto-friendly corn syrup that doesn't have all of those fibers and things that you see in the products that you know you find in the keto space. Now this recipe really is super easy to make. How easy is it? It is so easy, even Rachel can make it. Really? It is super easy, it takes a little bit of time, wow. but it's very, very easy, and it's kinda hard to screw this one up. So let's go over all of the ingredients that we're going to need. I'm pretty good at screwing stuff up though, Joe. Okay, so obviously the first thing we're gonna need is some kind of a sweetener. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna use allulose. Now I have tried this with a lot of the keto-friendly sweeteners, and it will work with pretty much all of them. You could use erythritol, but you wanna make sure you're using granulated. You can use like the brown swerve, the granulated brown swerve. That'll give you the darker colored corn syrup kind of thing. Um, but I really, really, really like it with allulose the best. I've also tried it with the bocha sweet and this works really well. But the reason I like allulose better is allulose acts like sugar. So you can caramelize it. It just, it, I think it gives a better flavor. The only issue with using allulose is it's only 70% as sweet as sugar. So that does affect things, but we have a way to fix that. And we're gonna show you that in a little while. So we're gonna use some allulose. Okay. Then this is a very important ingredient. We're gonna need some cream of tartar. Now the cream of tartar is really important because it's gonna help prevent something that happens a lot of times with corn syrup. You also see it with honey, yeah. and that is crystallization. Oh, I can't stand it when that happens. So we're gonna use a little bit of cream of tartar. That's gonna help prevent the crystallization. You can never get the lid off once it all crystallizes. We're gonna need some vanilla. Don't open it up and splash yourself with it. And then we're also gonna need some water. And then we need the secret ingredient, and that is tarragum. Tarragum. Now, I do want to say, you can do this with xanthan gum. Okay. I, I've tried it with xanthan gum. It does work with xanthan gum, but tarragum works better. It gives you an overall better product. It mixes in easier, and I like the color that you get better with the tarragum than when you use xanthan gum, because when you use the xanthan gum, what happens is it, it kind of gets cloudy and you see like bubbles trapped in there because of the way it acts. So I would really strongly, strongly suggest get tarragum. You know what, you don't have to buy it just for this because it works great in ice cream. You only need a quarter of a teaspoon in ice cream and people are gonna swear it's like store-bought ice cream. Well, also it's Scarlett O'Hara's 
favorite gum of all the gums? Because Tara, right? Okay, you ready? Yes. Let's put all this stuff to the side and get going. Okay, so what we're gonna do as we're putting this stuff to the side is we're going to get our stove and we're going to get a pot, which I've already got heating up here. Now, one thing I wanna say, when it comes to your pot, you wanna use a nice wide one if you have one. If you have a small one, that's fine, but it means it's gonna take longer. Because one of the things we're gonna do is evaporate and boil off the water. And the more surface area you have touching the burner, the faster it's going to be. I like faster. Okay, also, if you have something like stainless steel or even maybe like cast iron with the white enamel inside, that's better because then you can see the color change. Oh, nice. Whereas if you have a dark pot, it's a little bit harder to see it, but it will work with anyone. But again, use a bigger pot. So what we're gonna do is in our pot here, we're going to add one and a half cups of water. And you're gonna get that because I've already got it heating up. Nice and hot. Okay, now I will leave a link for this recipe down below on our website. Now to that, wait, before you add that in, I'm sorry. We're gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. And then we're gonna add in a lot. Our allulose, two cups of allulose. Two cups of allulose. And we're gonna add. Make sure we get it all. A quarter of a teaspoon of our uh, cream of tartar. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just give it a good mix. I suggest using a rubber spatula because things are gonna stick. So I would not use a whisk. Uh, and we're gonna get everything in here dissolved. Now, once everything's dissolved, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn up the heat and we're gonna get this to come to a boil. Okay, so once it's up to a boil, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn it down to like a simmer and we're gonna stir it. And you're basically gonna let this simmer for about 15 minutes. You can walk away, but you can't walk away. So you wanna occasionally stir it. Stay in the vicinity. But again, as I said, allulose will caramelize. So it will start turning a little brown. That's not gonna affect the color so long as you don't scorch it. If you scorch it, then you're gonna have a burnt taste. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep doing this for about 15 to 20 minutes. And again, it's gonna be dependent on the size of your pot. The bigger the pot, the less time it's gonna take. I've done it in a small pot and it took over an hour. And what we want to do is basically reduce the liquid by at least half. The more water that you boil off, the thicker this is going to be. Also note, we have not yet added the tarragon. We don't want to do that yet. If you do that now, it's going to ruin it. So we're going to just let this keep going for about 15 minutes. And we're going to go until it's a thick consistency where it actually coats the back of your spatula, your spoon, and it becomes like very thick uh, and resistant as you're stirring it. So if you look right now. It's like water still. It, see how it just drips off and it's not like coating the back of the spatula? We don't want that. We want to have like a stream come off, not droplets like this. So it is starting to thicken up a little bit, but we got a little bit of ways to go. You also are going to be looking for it to change color. Again, we're looking for a color similar to this. Yeah, it still looks like water. I feel like Hermione Granger. This is a very like potions class feeling thing, right? Is this polyjuice? It makes me nervous when things boil like this. I'm afraid I'm gonna burn it. Just keep stirring. You're gonna keep stirring. And again, you don't have to stir it constantly. You just wanna keep giving it a stir every once in a while, paying attention to it and you can see how the color is starting to change a little bit. It is definitely getting thicker. We're gonna go ahead and turn this heat down just a little bit. Is there any you like can see visual indicator getting if, better. if things are going south, what will be happening? You'll start seeing the scorching. Okay. But you can smell that vanilla it coming really out. smells really good. It looks good, but I'm always nervous. I, I was like that mom that like, if the baby's crying, it's like, go to sleep. But then when the baby is asleep, I'm checking it's breathing constantly. So I'm not even enjoying the rest. Now, one of the things that you'll start to even notice is that it is getting a little bit thicker. There's a little bit more resistance, but we're not quite there yet. Again, we're looking to really have almost half the amount of liquid that we started with. It 
was boiling. <laughs> it was boiling. Okay, maybe I should put this note in there. You're dealing with boiling sugar. It's hot. Don't put it to your tongue, Rachel. You can burn yourself with it. You yeah. might even want to have a pair of gloves. We are really getting to that point. You can see how the color is starting to change. It's getting that nice golden color. Yeah. Uh, we're we're almost there. We're going to let this go a little bit more. I actually really like to get that really golden yellow color like this. Not quite there yet, but you can definitely see that there is a resistance here as you stir it. Yeah. And uh, it's not dripping off of the spatula as much. Now, one of the things about when you're using a rubber spatula, it's kind of hard to tell like if it's coating it because it's a silicone spatula. It's designed and to come nothing's off. Nothing's supposed to be sticking on there. So what we can do is we can take a wooden spoon if you have one. And again, you're just kind of checking this for the consistency. consistency. And you can see how it is coating the spoon. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for that sticky substance. So we're going to let this go for maybe another five minutes. And then we're going to finish the final step. Okay, looks like we are getting to the color Very nice. that I'm looking for. It's got that nice golden color. And again, if you go too far, all that means is that you've caramelized the sugar a little bit more, or that, not the sugar, but you know, the allulose. It's not gonna affect the taste, right? just the color. So don't worry about it if you've gone too far. Now you can even let this boil down even more. But this is about where I want it to be. We've lost about half of the liquid. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in our final ingredient, which is the tarragon. Now I've tried this with a lot of different amounts. We're gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon. You can use more. I would not go over a half. Okay. Just know that the more you use, the thicker it's gonna be. And I would definitely start with a quarter and then see how it goes. Now, because this is hot, it's obviously a thinner consistency, but as it cools down, it's going to get thicker. Right. So what I would do is go with a quarter of a teaspoon, pour it into your jar, let it cool down. Okay. And then if you find, hey, I really want it to be thicker, you could heat it back up and add in a little bit more. So this is where you're going to take a whisk. Okay. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to lightly whisk it. And we are going to slowly sprinkle the terra gum across the top. You don't want to just dump it in there or it's going to clump. Oh, okay. I don't okay. That. So the whole idea is you want to make sure you're breaking it up as it's coming in. You get serious about this. You can also turn the Cook heat off while friend. you're doing this. And what you want to do is make sure that you have no clumps in there. Uh, so if you need to take your whisk, break up any of the clumps and just get everything mixed. You actually have a bunch on the whisk, so turn the whisk around. Oh, thank you. To get all of that off. I got to clean my whiskers. Let me see. You want to stop stirring for a minute and see how we're doing? Go ahead, you got a few more clumps over there that you want to just try to, you can vigorously whisk it, that's okay. Vigorously. Okay, so that's good. So what we're gonna do is, we've got the heat off, we're gonna let this cool down for just a second and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna push this off to the side. Be super careful. Because it's hot. It's hot, don't lick it. We're gonna take a jar. And you want to put this into something that you can seal. You want it to be airtight because you can store this in your cabinet for you a few to, months. You don't have to put this in the refrigerator. Nope, you don't have to store it in the refrigerator. And again, here's the cool thing is we've added the cream of tartar. That's going to help prevent crystallization. But if you do get some crystallization, that's okay. Just heat it back up, just like honey. People don't realize like honey, there's no shelf life on that. It's wow. good forever. Now it will crystallize. And now all you gotta do is warm it up and the crystals go away. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pour this into our jar. These are just mason jars. Always let it cool down a little bit because you're dealing with glass. Right. Wow, look at that. And there you go. It looks and like pee. As this cools down, it's, it's not going pee, to though. get, no, it is not pee. No. As it cools down, it's going to get thicker. Now what I'm gonna do is 
I'm not going to seal this all the way because it's gonna you know, be very hot and you don't wanna get that vapor lock in there. So right. we're just gonna kind of push this off to the side and you can see even this one compared to this one, this has got that more golden color because we like, basically had more of the water get boiled off. So this one will end up being a little bit thicker than this one. But overall, that's how you do it. See, very easy to do. Super it's, easy. It just takes a little time. bit of time because you gotta boil off the water. And you will see people who do it without doing all the boiling of the water, but I think this gives you a better taste and it gives you a better consistency overall. Now, I like the sweet level that it is right now, but as we said before, you can up the sweetness after you're done making this. Yeah, so what you would do is if you want to up the sweetness just a little bit, but it doesn't really matter to me because I'm really using this for the sticky consistency right. and I'm usually going to add in some other sweetener if I'm making, for example, keto gummy bears or something yeah. like that. And we have some videos coming out for that kind of stuff. But what you would do is while it's boiling, before you add in your tarragum, add in just a few drops of liquid sucralose or stevia. I prefer the sucralose, but I know some people don't you're gonna use a lot less of this. When I say if you're gonna add liquid sucralose, four or five drops, tops. For the batch. If you're gonna use liquid stevia, I'd say about a half a teaspoon. But again, try it this way, yeah. and then again, start small. You can always add, but you can't ever take, take away. away. So let us know down in the comment section, do you have any recipes that you were looking for a keto corn syrup and couldn't make? Let us know down below. Let us know what they were. I'm really curious. What would you do in the keto world with a keto corn syrup? Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we come up with a new recipe, you'll be learned to it. I almost forgot, we gotta put our label on.